Over seven years, we got to travel to the far corners of the globe and travel to some of the most exotic and remote locations. We paddled past icebergs. We hiked along knife edge mountains. We surfed shallow, crazy reef breaks. And these are the moments that we live for. This is what life's all about for us. We are here talking about Chase That Feeling. And we have director Matt Gilson and Blake Thornton here with us today. Um, so thank you both for being here and congratulations on being nominated for six awards. That's pretty great. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, we're really stoked and it's nice to uh, to finally have our movie out there and for, for the world to see, it's really exciting. So you say finally have that film out there. So you two have been friends for a while. You've been doing all these extreme sports for a while and you've been doing film for a while. Um, I would love to hear about the choice to take your filming and turn it in to a documentary. Definitely. No, well, look, we, we've always had a love, um, love for filming and I suppose it started back um, in our sort of late teen years. Um, surfing was sort of the main thing that we filmed. Blake was a professional surfer in his, his early years and um, yeah, we spent a lot of time just heading down the coast filming surfing. And then, um, yeah, as we sort of started to get going and doing little edits and stuff, um, obviously it's really enjoyable to sort of, you know, have raw footage and cut it together with a song. And we started to think like, you know, what else could we do? And we started to film, you know, entire journeys of us traveling, you know, to the locations and sort of intercutting that with action. Um, and then music's such a powerful tool to sort of, you know, make people feel something. And we sort of started to dabble with, it, you know, different styles of music. And uh, and then from there, we just, you know, we integrated, uh, you know, a snow trip down to the, down to the snowy fields here. Um, and then we are just like, you know, where can we take this from here? And it wasn't until we went to, uh, did a trip to Mexico where we filmed not only surfing, but the whole journey and the culture and stuff. And then we cut that together. And that was where it really sort of, you know, it came to, to life for us that we, we had something and we wanted to share, share what we were filming. And from there, that's when Chase That Filling was born and we started filming the, the film in 2013. Uh, and it took us seven years to film and two years uh, in post-production um but to have it yeah have it there and have a finished product now it's it's you know it's it's such an amazing thing and it's 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 so good that um you know the last sort of almost 10 years of our life is is documented and and cut together in such a such a um, unique way that um it's it's out there fun to see and enjoy now too now blake in the documentary it's mentioned quite a few times some of your um terrible accidents that have happened uh both of you have had some hiccups but Blake especially you um I would love to hear more about um what is it that helps you get back up after such a major fall like that yeah I like to think of um always been a pretty positive person um I, I think as you grow older you most certainly start to understand life a bit more uh and just the tragedy is a, a, a real part of it unfortunately and that everyone does go through it um and I think, I think just looking at everything really holistically has, has helped me sort of never let myself feel too down in the dumps, you know, like you're going to, you are going to have adversity. Um, the, the main kind of point I think you're referring to is I, I was hit by a, a boat when I was uh, 15 years old and that, that kind of put a, an end to my, I love rugby league which is a, a contact sport in Australia. Um, I, I love playing that. And that was kind of where I put all my time and effort into. And I, I did have visions and aspirations to kind of pursue that sport. Um, but yeah, it, after that incident, that kind of major incident and the, the impact that it had on my body, um, I, I was able to kind of shift focus and, 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 and look at it very positively. And, and it did give me, kind of the drive to then just com commit completely to pursuing a surfing career. Um, and that was definitely a, a big, a big part of my success. I feel is that I had survived a major incident. I had um, come out the other end uh, with a positive outlook and I did not take anything for granted. And I was able to build a really strong mindset and, and just 
to stick with it. And, um, you know, we've been, we've been able to not just individually, but like collectively myself and Matt, we've been able to achieve some incredible things. And I think it is all just due to the way we are able to, um, you know, process, overcome, and then, um, you know, see the, the life in the, in the big, the big scope, I, I think. Of all the wonderful places you have been, um, if you could only go back to one of them, where would you go? The, we, all the places we went to were so amazing and, and yeah, I'd love, love to go back to all of them. But one place I'd love to go back to is Alaska for me. Like I, I really do love this, the size and the scale of the mountains there. It's so beautiful and untouched, um, really pristine. And, and just, yeah, that, that whole mountain scene there, Alaska is just like, you know, the last frontier is their tagline. It really truly is that. And I'd love to go back to Alaska one day. That's definitely um, I'll, I'll still on the bucket list to get back there. For me, it's it's Iceland. Um, Iceland was the most incredible place I've I've ever been. Um, there was there was definitely a, a, like a magical feeling just just in the land there. Um, I guess it's so rich in history. The landscape changed so much. Um, it's just a, a wild place, and what we were able to achieve in that two week window it was nothing short of amazing. Um, but there was still plenty more to see and do. Um, it's almost as far from Australia as you can possibly get uh, geographically, but just everything about it just blew me away. Um, just, yeah, the, the landscape, the people were lovely. There is surf there. There is snow there. You can do anything and everything. Um, there's something there for everyone. So I think Iceland is somewhere I will definitely get back to one day. Where's next? Where are you all headed next? <laughs> <laughs> oh, because, yeah, we, well, uh, for me personally, I, I love the cold destinations. Canada would be great. I'd love to go to Canada. But uh, I suppose next on my list would be uh, Patagonia and Chile. Um, somewhere in South America would be great. In the wintertime, nice and cold and stormy, hopefully some snow, hopefully some surf. Um, yes, yeah, somewhere like, like Patagonia and Chile would be, yeah, I'm really excited. Just, just the thought of it you know, really excites me. Much the same, I, even though I, I have surfed and surfing is generally associated with tropical waters and, you know, sunshine and, and board shorts, um, I have really grown to love cold destinations and I, I love, we, we both love the idea of that Patagonia, Chile area, but also one we, we've always spoke about is Greenland, is uh, just being an extremely remote location, very wild, very rugged. Um, that, that is one that I feel like one day we will get to. That's one destination for sure. So you two are great friends, great business partners, great filmmakers together. You have this wonderful dynamic. Um, what is it about each other for each of you that keeps you sticking together? Um, yeah, I think we're just very like-minded. We grew up, we both grew up surfing together and, and our dads were also friends. So having that sort of family connection there, I, I feel like, um, you know, started us off on, on the right foot, but just, having surfing as the common interest, you know, that yeah, our friendship was kind of was, was stemmed around surfing and it's such a joyful sport and such a, such an enjoyable thing to, to share with someone um, that, you know, that's where, that's where our, our friendship sort of began. And then, you know, as we went traveling, as, as everyone knows, you, you seem to, you know, you're, you're intruding on people's personal space a lot when you're, when you're away with, with that same person for weeks on end. And especially for us, we were in motorhomes a lot. So we were definitely cramming on top of each other. Um, but, you know, you kind of learn to sort of respect people's personal space and just, um, you know, help out w where we can. And so, yeah, I feel like we have a very similar outlook as far as like, you know, always, always willing to sort of put her hand up if it was washing the dishes or is taking the rubbish out or is going to the grocery store getting something or you know we're just always just um you know w willing to sort of go that extra mile to, to sort of help out and I, I feel like we've, we've both Blake and I both have that um common sort of um part of our personality and then obviously the people that we went choose to choose to went, go away with um also had that and so we, we definitely worked well as a team and I feel like that was that's a huge con contributor to the success of the film is that we, we definitely um, worked well as a team, Blake and I, and then obviously the, uh, the guys also that came with us. Uh, teamwork was, was huge. And obviously, you know, we, we self-funded this whole thing. And, and so we didn't have a big budget to do anything really. So we, we really had to um, 
you know, everyone had to dig deep and, and do do their part to sort of make this happen. So, yeah, that was, you know, definitely just willing to go that extra mile. And, and um, yeah, I, I feel like just like-minded personalities is definitely um, the, the strongest part. Well, you do learn, I think, travelling is a, a true test of a relationship, um, whether it be with, with a friend or, a, you know, a, a, a partner. Um, but, yeah, de- most definitely we've, <laughs> we, we've gone through all the trials and tribulations of travelling, um, all the pressures, all the stresses, um, all the hurdles, all the hiccups. Um, and we were doing that before we started filming as well. We were, we were going up and down the coast looking for surf, like looking for places to surf. We were traveling to Indonesia as, as uh, you know, little teenagers going on surf trips. Um, and yeah, straight away, we, you, you just know, and I, I know this um, from like, uh, obviously a lot of experience, I traveled the world uh, as a career with the surfing side of it. And I learned really quickly, and this is, this is the same for everyone. You learn really quickly who you can and can't sort of travel with because it's just for the, the good of your, your, your mental health, basically. And like some people, do do things one way and you might do things the other way or you might so we just really clicked uh, and we clicked straight away um you meet so many so many people through life like so so many people through life but i think you you just know straight away the ones that you know are going to be really good friends of yours and and be a big part of your life um moving forward and like matt said our dads went to school together um they they were they were friends themselves so i think that that connection was what initially brought me, me and Matt together. And the, the second we started surfing, we, uh, you, you, we, we knew we were going to be friends forever. Like little chunk of your documentary talks about how your cameraman Christian passed away. I'm curious how that affected your ultimate final cut of the documentary. And if that changed even some of where you went, et cetera. Um, well, yeah, so Christian was such a special part of, of the, the whole project, so like from the very beginning, like back in 2012, when we are kind of just brainstorming and just sort of, you know, spitballing ideas, Christian was, was there from the very beginning and he was, he was a, the number one sort of believer behind the project and, and had so much input at, at that sort of um, the, the concept phase um, and f- for him to be able to come along on the trips with us and film and produce and kind of just be there uh, and share those experiences was, was so special. Um, and as far as changing the cut, like I feel like after he passed away, like we'll, we were just like, you know, it's so hard to believe, especially such a close friend and such a skilled person, such a good person, you know, it's just it's such a sad thing. Um, it had so much life left to give, which is, you know, probably one of the saddest things, but, um it kind of gave us more motivation to want to finish the project for one and secondly we just really wanted to do a really special tribute uh part to him just to kind of solidify how important he was to the project and um and to you know for him to be a part of the story so then people can kind of you know make the most of their life and get out there and experience um as much as they can because you know life is short you just want to get out there and make the most of it so um I feel like it, it emphasizes the story point even more and, and just, um, yeah, I suppose the tribute section for us was, was one thing that we really wanted to put a lot of time and effort into and make it as special as possible. Throughout the film and even the title, chase that feeling. You're chasing this feeling that you can't get from doing anything else except traveling to these gorgeous places and doing these wild extreme sports. Um, for each of you, can you tell me a little bit about what that feeling represents to you? Um, I feel like it's, it's a reason to get out of bed in the morning. It's something that, you know, gets you excited. And it's really nice to have stuff to look forward to and to get excited about in life. Like whether it's a, you know, a, a little one-week holiday that you've got coming up in six months' time that you can really put in your calendar and you can look forward to. And it kind of, you know, I suppose it motivates you to get out there and work hard and, and save your money and be like, oh, my God, I can't wait. In six months' time, we get to, I get to go on this little trip or in five months' time or in two weeks' time, even if sometimes it's a long weekend. Um, it's just nice to, to have su- stuff to look forward to. Um, and, yeah, obviously for us and in, in the film, the – the action sports sort of side of things we're going to places where we can do we can either surf or snowboard or skydive um that was it for us but obviously for everyone it's different um 
but just to just to have stuff sort of booked into your calendar to look forward to is um is you know i, I suppose chase that feeling is is for me is some, something that you can get up um get excited about and really look forward to i, I love having things in the calendar i just i, I love having things I, and i can speak now um just after finishing, I'm up, like I mentioned, I'm up in Indonesia. I've just done a 10-day boat trip where out in the Sumatran Islands and there's no phone service, there's no, you, you disconnect, you switch off. And all I did for 10 days was surf, 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 surf. And I've been looking forward to this for the last sort of six months. Um, and that, that for me is the feeling I, I pursue is just the, the it's pure pleasure. Um, and it's, it is easy to get stuck in a bit of a, a rut, a routine. Um, we both live in Sydney, which is a, you know, a high-paced environment. The the reality is you have to work, you have to hold a job, um, and we see lots of people that that do that, but just kind of get stuck in the same habit. And and there's not as much joy in their life as there could be. And you can see it, and it's because they're just like they're under pressure to perform professionally, and and they've got a lot of like commitments, and so. Chase that feeling is adventuring um, and it is, you know, exploring. It is, you know, the stuff that makes me tick and it is that feeling of, of contentment after we have chased that feeling. Um, so, yeah, we, it's, it's putting things in the calendars. It's exploring new, new places. It's um, adventuring to new places. It's, it's getting out there and making the most of your life for sure. What have you learned about yourself through the making of your film? chase that feeling i think that the the limits that you think you may have um whether it be mentally or physically um is it, it can be stretched um we definitely we pushed ourselves both physically and mentally quite a lot um not just in in the film itself but in the, the making of the film um so I, I think a big thing i learned about myself is that i i do have more to give than I initially thought. Um, and I, I can, um, you know, go further and go harder than I, than I initially thought. Um, and Matt, Matt touched on earlier too, that we are, we're not scared to kind of roll the sleeves up and, and, and take, take challenges on. And we, we have had to take a lot of stuff on with the making of this film and, and, and learn new skills and, um, you know, the kind of deepen our, our skill sets and, and that's that's something that I've I've definitely learned about myself is that I am capable of of doing a lot more than what I initially thought. I suppose it, hard work, you know, as, as long as you're willing to sort of put put the effort in, you know, you really can achieve things that you didn't think you you possibly could. Like as far as setting out to it to make a feature film, um, you know, if we knew how how much work was involved, we, we would we would maybe second guess the whole, the whole thing but we as soon as we sort of committed to, to this project we we always had the vision of seeing it through and obviously with Christian passing that kind of gave us more motivation that we weren't going to give up and we were going to see it through and um, as, as long as you're willing to sort of work hard at something and stick with it um, you know you can achieve anything and I, and I suppose there is so much time in the day like obviously you can work your full-time job and you have friendships and relationships and you want to keep up but there is a lot of spare time if you're willing to sacrifice some sleep. Um, you know, every sort of spare minute of our time in the past 10 years has gone into this project. And so um, it really does show you that there is there is some spare time in the day. As long as you're willing to work hard at something, you can achieve it, whether it's, um, you know, researching, trying to trying to learn a new skill, like, like Blake said, uh, as, well, as long as you're willing to sort of put the, put the hard work in and, and put the time in, then, then you can achieve it.